Hey everyone, Steve here from My Crypto World. Let's have a look at the market and go through some interesting news stories that have happened this week. Okay, as we always do, we kick these sessions off with a very quick look at the crypto heat map. As you can see today, it's a down day for pretty much uh, most of the coins in the market. Um, Polkadot's an exception. Hex is an exception. BNB is an exception. They're up, but they're only up by a margin. So nothing really too exciting today. We go over and have a look at uh, where things have been for the last seven days. Uh, again, we're looking at uh, the coin market cap here. And we can see that over the last seven days, Bitcoin's still down 0.77%. Uh, Ethereum is down 3.87%. BNB um, is up at 1.74%. Tether is stablecoin, pretty much stable. Um, Terra Luna is up 3.8%. Uh, actually, Terra Luna is doing really well, 38% um, up for the last 30 days, which is good to see for Terra holders. Polkadot is up by 1.6%. Um, Dogecoin, Dogecoin. 11.68%. Uh, Near Protocol doing really well at 24% up and up 112% for the last 30 days. So, but pretty much overall, um, you're looking at mainly reds here uh, in the screen. So we jump over to our charts. Let's have a look here at our total market cap. Now, last week um, I spoke by the time I'd done my video and posted it up I thought the cycle had en had ended uh, it absolutely hadn't it actually the market did fall all the way back down to our big support line at 1.866 trillion um, went slightly below it but then closed up above it now if you're Somebody who watches what I do uh, on a regular basis, you know that um, closing below or above a certain resistance line or support line is really important. Um, when your stock or coins are falling, if it breaks through a, a support line, you don't want to see it closing below that, really. Uh, you want to see it bounce back up from that like a spring and close above it. And that's exactly what it did. And since then, the market's been quite bullish in the, over the last, say, four or five days. So um, our new cycle started uh, here, uh, which is around about the 8th of Jan, and that will go for another 31 days. So we'll see what happens over the next 31 days. Um, again, I'm fairly bullish with the way the market is looking at the moment. I'm not really uh, thinking that it's going to take a dive any lower, but however, we have to be prepared for that. And if it does go lower than that, then we look at the next support and resistance, resistance line. At this point in time, if it does break and fall below the $1.866 trillion mark, it will probably land around about the $1.13 trillion dollar mark now before you panic uh, that may not happen it probably won't happen I think it's got a higher probability of going up again this is just my financial opinion and the way I read the market now if it does go below the uh, 1.866 trillion dollar mark um, you've got a couple of options obviously one of them is to hold uh, the second would be to sell uh, and your third option, which is probably my most favorite one, is to dollar cost average in. Um, we've spoken about that in previous videos. Um, I've highlighted on the screen here a couple of uh, coins I just wanted to make mention of. So while the whole market has actually plummeted as a group, so the total market cap has, has sort of fallen from $3 trillion down to just below $2 trillion, there have been um, coins in the market that have gone against the grain. So they've gone up. So Link is one of them. You can see here Link has actually moved up really nicely since around about the 4th of December. A little bit of a sideways movement, kind of maybe a pennant pattern happening there, and then a breakout that uh, that happened um, from that. It's come down a little bit now. Um, as we mentioned in previous videos, stocks will never rise forever. They'll always come back down, find some resistance, which it seems to have found here, before it takes off again. Um, one, which is Harmony has also really gone against the grain here um, that virtually hasn't moved at all and that's pushing for an all-time new high so let's see hopefully it can break its all-time high of 37 cents ran it up to uh, 38 cents there it's 37.99 uh, cents uh, and we'll see where that goes uh, soul coin or um, phantasma has also gone against the grain of the market movement, the whole market movement, and that has continued to rise um, consistently pretty much um, throughout this period. Again, it's hitting its, uh, its 
got near its all-time high, hasn't broken through it, but it is starting to rally again. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. And the last one we want to look at is VRA. Uh, VRA, um, I spoke about this last week in my video and spoke about how it has a proof of view uh, concept built into it. I'll talk about that in a moment with a new that's come out from China regarding that. Uh, but again, once that news article broke, VRE, VRA sorry, has, uh, has really taken off. Okay, first in the news this week has been Sol or Phantasma. We just spoke about that, that it's gone against the grain and continued to move up. Uh, this article came out earlier this week and it's really just highlighting three reasons why Phantasma or Sol is chasing after all new time highs. Now there's a couple of reasons in here that the article, the article goes on to suggest. Um, the main one is uh, the new projects that launch on Phantasma. One of the biggest developments to come out of the Phantasma ecosystem over the past couple of weeks has been the launch of several projects on the network. This includes the role-playing card game uh, Blood Rune, uh, the mobile game Ghost Festival and the NFT marketplace Ghost Markets. And it just goes on to say that the Ghost Market NFT marketplace is currently conducting its initial decentralized exchange offering or IDO uh, on Flamingo Finance and will have its uh, Ghost Market token available to operate on six different networks that Ghost Market supports. Those include Ethereum, Binance Chain, Phantasma, Avalanche, Polygon and Neo N3. Um, so there's a bit of stuff happening on the uh, Phantasma chain, which is terrific. Uh, it talks about cross-chain cross, co cross entrepreneurialty, which I've spoken about in my previous videos, about how it's uh, very adaptable across multiple networks. Uh, and it then goes on to talk about um, some other reasons is because of the NFT and gaming popularity. Um, it does say, and um, it's very true, that uh, NFT Google searches have gone through the roof over the last six, six to eight months. Um, the trend is almost bucking the trend of um, Google searches for cryptocurrencies. So it's gaining a lot of traction, which is um, what we want to do. If you, if you, what's what, what we, what we want to see, if we are interested in the NFT marketplace. So also in the news that uh, was quite interesting for me to read about was um, billionaire investor Bill Miller puts 50% of his net worth into Bitcoin. Um, so this is. Uh, that's quite a bit of money to be um, putting into Bitcoin. So it just shows you how bullish uh, some people are on the project. Uh, Miller, who said he no longer considers himself a Bitcoin observer, but rather a real Bitcoin bull, as he said in a WealthTrack interview on last Friday. The billionaire investor now holds 50% of his net worth in Bitcoin and related investments in major industry firms. Uh, it just goes on to talk about some other firms that he invests in. Uh, Miller bought his first and. Uh, Bitcoin back in 2014 when it was trading at $200 and then purchased a little bit more over time when it became $500. The investor did not put in any more money for years until Bitcoin plummeted to $30,000 after hitting a high of around about $66,000 in April. Uh, and then this is quoted from him. Um, this time I started buying it again at $30,000 down from $66,000. And the reasoning was that there was a lot more people using it. There was a lot more money coming in from the venture capital world. And Miller st uh, stated that adding that he thought he bought a fair amount in the $30,000 range. Um, the billionaire invested, the billionaire invested, I'm not having a good day talking today. The billionaire investor noted that as he looks at Bitcoin as an insurance policy against a financial catastrophe, as well as powerful investment tool that has been outstripping gold. He also pointed out that this Bitcoin's scarcity, meaning that only 21 million Bitcoin can be created. So um, that's really interesting. Um, now he's put in, as I said, 50%. Uh, he does not certainly recommend putting in 50% of your total wealth into Bitcoin. Um, he does talk about most average people should be looking at putting at least 1% of their assets into projects like Bitcoin. So that was interesting. Now the other thing that came out was um, not the XRP lawsuit. We wanted to go to this article here, again, just regarding the total crypto market cap. Now at the moment, as I said, we're just slightly under 2 trillion. But we've got an article that came out earlier this week stating that uh, an ex-Goldman Sachs executive predicts crypto market cap reaching $250 trillion within a decade, so within 10 years. Um, and look, I've got to agree with it. Um, the amount of money that's going into crypto at the moment, the, the amount of 
incredibly good and clever projects that are coming out to the DeFi space, uh, to gaming platforms. It is absolutely going to revolutionize the way we think about um, digital assets uh, and the way the internet works as well. Um, and I think the important thing to note from this is we are still so early in this space. So um, whatever you're holding in your portfolio now, just think to yourself, I know that everyone wants investment gains immediately. You know, that's that's life. We all want it now. But just imagine what your portfolio might be worth in a decade's time if you can hold on that long. Um, it just goes on to state that in a recent interview, former Goldman Sachs executive Raoul Pal predicted that a crypto is uh, that crypto is on pace to be to do more than 100 times its market capitalization to 250 trillion within a decade. So again, I'll leave the description or the link for this article in the description below for you to see um, what that is about. And there he is there, Raul Pal. Um, Pal said that the prediction would coincide with massive adoption for crypto in the coming years, including saying that 3.5 billion people will be using digital assets and crypto networks. Uh, he claims his prediction was consistent and a straightforward when looking at the network adoption models, which would ultimately lead to the market cap of crypto turning exponential. So again, it's good news to see that somebody who's so um, uh, invested into the crypto space, and he's been a commentator in this area for many, many, many years, um, what his thoughts are on that. Let's jump over to another article. Uh, we've done uh, Phantasma. Let's go to Veracity. So I spoke about this last week, well before this article was even launched. Um, onto the marketplace. I spoke about the proof of view concept and how important that would be for somebody or institutions like universities uh, around the globe. Um, now this article goes on to explain that, but it doesn't talk about the universities. It's more about um, bots watching um, sports casts and things like that uh, and, um, and the cost of advertising uh, and the amount of advertising that happens uh, and money that's wasted on advertising for people who might, for example, be watching something online and not necessarily be at their chair they might be off doing other things um, so uh, what happened after the my last video uh, veracity it says here is pleased to announce that the proof of view technology has passed its examination by the people's republic of china which is really good so now veracity's point of view proof of view sorry technologies ensures that content and advertisement viewed via the content players with a point of view in, uh, integration are served to real viewers, uh, which is really important. So um, the grant has already been uh, pa uh, patented in the USA, and it looks like now they've got one in China as well. As the second largest world economy after the USA, China spends some $120 billion on advertising each year, with over 65% of those ads served online. So it go just highlights how important it is to have proof of view when you're dealing with online audiences. Television's a different story. Everyone watches TV, goes up, make you make a cup of coffee or go and get your dinner, go to the bathroom while the TV's still playing. Um, but it's a little bit different. Uh, not that you don't do those things when you're watching things online, but generally uh, speaking, you really want to make sure that you're, the, the advertising dollars that you're spending, if that's what you are doing on these online platforms, is being viewed by people and real people at that and not just bots uh, that go on to um, suck the money out of... Um, from the, um, the people who are doing the advertising. So that's a pretty good story there. Now, finally, um, this last article is on Theta. Uh, and now I put a video out last week regarding T-Drop um, and what that would look like. One of the questions I kept getting back from a few people was, was the, could you stake T-Drop? Um, and you absolutely can. So just uh, this article is from Medium. And it just goes on to say the launch of the T-Drop token is just around the corner with the distribution to T that's a Theta stakers coming uh, on February the 1st. Um, now, each week a new blog will detail a new feature for the T-Drop launch, including T-Drop staking, governance, and VIP benefits on the Theta Drop platform. If this is your first time learning about T-Drop, uh, skip down to the frequently asked questions. It just goes on, which pretty much covers the ecosystem, how it's going to be distributed, how much utility there is, what's the value of that utility, and what it's going to look like on the Theta platform when it actually does launch. And you can see here they've given you a screenshot. So this isn't live at the moment. Uh, this is just what it will look like. For those that have got an edge node, a validator node, or a guardian node, or a, a deregulated, uh, the delegated, sorry, uh, guardian node, that's 
that's if you're you know might be staking with um, G pool or somebody like that you'll have a new section to look at too which will be your T drop um, your T drop button there to go in and have a look at that so for those who are interested in that I'll leave again the link uh, in the description below it was pretty much the entire article summarizing um, not summarizing but expanding on what I spoke about last week about the supply being 20 billion and how that 20 billion supply of t-drop will be broken uh, down over the next coming months and years as people still continue to use that it also goes into why t-drop and why don't they just use um, t fuel or theta um, which gives you a bit better insight uh, into the T-Drop um, functionality. That's it from us uh, today. Uh, I hope your week has been great and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.